so, you know, I think one thing for us coming out of the scrimmage Saturday was, you know, this, this is going to be a big week for us from a practice standpoint and then getting ourselves ready for scrimmage too. Um, you know, I think we, we've got a lot of, you know, I think we made a lot of strides leading into the first scrimmage. Um, and now we can identify some other areas that we definitely need to improve upon. Um, and, and so that's what this week is for. And this week is also for really starting to hone in on the situations of the game, right? Whether it's, uh, you know, red area, goal line, uh, backed up scenarios, third down, the tempo within the game. So as much as that early on was just installing uh, our schemes on, on all three phases, now it's really understanding the whys and when we're calling them and for the situations as they arise. And so that was a big emphasis in practice today, but uh, thought the guys came out with a good spirit. Um, it was a tough practice, physical practice, um, a lot of different situations involved. Uh, and I thought we responded pretty well. Go ahead and put your raised hand functions up and we'll roll through some questions. Uh, start with Dennis Stella Pena. Coach, you know, coming in, all you knew about Casey and Hudson was what you'd seen on film. Now that you've really had your hands on them for a bit, have they have, have they pleasantly surprised you in any area, either of them? Well, I, again, I didn't come in with with expectations. I came in with a clean slate, so I, I don't know. I don't think they've surprised me in anything because anything that they've done well, I've accepted them for doing it well. Um, any areas where maybe they've struggled some, I just felt like okay, this is an area for us to work on. Um, so I, I didn't I didn't come in with an expectation of one way or another. I mean, clearly they're both very athletic young men. Uh, they throw the ball well. Uh, I think they've got a good grasp of what we're trying to do. Um, now it's just getting into the, the, the flow of, of letting things happen naturally um, and not playing quite as robotic. And, you know, that, that comes with, rep, with reps and, and getting in the different situations and scenarios. But I, I think all in all, I mean, I'm pleased with where we're at at that position. Kirk Bowles, go ahead. Yes, yeah, Steve. Uh, I wonder if you think you're one of these coaches who thinks – you can teach a quarterback to be accurate, or is that kind of almost inborn? And what's the most important thing you look for in a quarterback? One factor. Well, th those two kind of go hand in hand because I do think physically the one thing I look for in a quarterback early on is does he throw a catchable ball? Um, because the idea when you call pass plays is to complete them and to throw – to complete passes, most likely you have to put it in an area uh, and with the right velocity and or touch to allow the receiver to, to catch the ball and, and advance the football. So th they, those two things kind of go hand in hand. I, I think there are some things fundamentally we can work on uh, to enhance their accuracy. Um, but, but I think some people have a knack for throwing an accurate ball, a catchable ball, and some people don't, no matter how talented they are. Um, we're fortunate we've got both guys pretty much have that natural trait to them. Um, so we're fortunate on that front. Bob Ballou, you're up. Steve, when you look at the freshmen that are incoming, um, how do you go about the process with them? Do you try to throw them in the fire and see how they respond? Do you try to get them, you know, what kind of reps do you try to get them? And then how do you just think they're responding so far? Well, they, they were really – on the same page with everybody else. Again, we were in brand new systems, right? Offense, defense, and special teams. So they really kind of got onboarded exactly at the same time as everybody else. So we really haven't tried to take it easy on them on that front. You know, the installation's been what it's been. They've, we've put them in the fire. Um, naturally, there's some, there's some physical growth still needed for some guys. Um, you know, when you're talking about just a maturity level, you know, these kids are still supposed to be seniors in high school, but I do think coming in early is invaluable for them to get a head start, um, whether it's in the weight room, um, whether it's a in the classroom of, of buying into that, but also in football. Um, you know, they're just getting exposed to so much right now, and I think they'll reap the benefits of that uh, come fall camp. Sam Kahn, go ahead. Hey, Steve, having a couple of weeks to see him out on the practice field, what are your impressions of just the pure talent that Bijan has? Well, I think, I think Bijan's a very talented guy. You know, he's got a really good center, low center of gravity. Uh, he's a one cut guy that can get vertical. Um, he can, uh, you know, I, I think he uses his weapons well. He's got a very good stiff arm. Uh, he's a natural catcher out of the backfield. Um, I think one thing for us to, for growth with him 
is really understanding the pass protection piece of it all uh, to where he's really comfortable uh, in that arena. Um, but again, we're fortunate because we've got a nice compliment with Roshan there too, who's also a big physical back who catches the ball well, who's tough to get on the ground. Um, so we, we've got, we've got two really nice players there right now, but, uh, you know, and, and they're progressing well, you know, I think they're a good fit for our system. Uh, fortunately. Brian Davis, you're up. See, j just so, just so we have it right. What, what practice number was today? Was it? Six, Same seven, practice, eight. number nine. You're at nine. Okay. Um, on, on the quarterbacks, do you do you believe that there is such a thing as a game manager and that label, or or are you looking for someone who is driving the action with deep balls and you know pushing the envelope, things like that? You know, I, I don't know. Our quarterback last year got labeled a game manager and threw almost 50 touchdowns and led us to a national championship. So I guess he was a pretty good game manager. Um, you know, I, I think a quarterback's responsibility is to manage the game, um, you know, to control the tempo of the offense, to direct the, to, to direct the action, uh, and their responsibilities to execute the calls as we see fit. And if we're calling a lot of shot plays down the field, then that requires him to drive the ball down the field. If, if we're uh, running the football and, and doing some things that to control the tempo of the game, then, then that's his responsibility. So to me, Good quarterbacks are game managers, uh, but they also have the ability to be aggressive when when called upon to do so. Roger Wallace, you're up. Hey, Steve, I'm wondering at this point, are you kind of past the newness point? You know them, they know you, and, and it's more just about, all right, we're a football team getting ready to play football, or is that an ongoing process? Uh, I, I don't, I don't, I hate to speak out of both sides of my mouth on this answer, but the reality of it is I think we've broken the ice. I think they know me and I know them. Um, you know, we coach them hard. Um, we have a high expectation of them and we push them. And I think they appreciate that. But that, with all that being said, I do think we are still learning one another. I, I think we're, we're still in the growth stage, but I think the ice has been broken. Um, that, that, you know, I think there's, a, there's an understanding of the style of team we want to be the expectation uh, from the coaching staff to the players and then from the players to each other. Um, and we're pushing one another to get there. But with that, we're still as, as different parts of the game present themselves or different scenarios present themselves. There's still a lot of learning to be done. Jeff Howe, go ahead. Hey, Sark, with the two uh, defensive end outside linebacker positions, uh, what do you guys label those? And just in terms of not specific players, but in terms of physical traits and skills, is there anything that, I guess, what really differentiates one of those positions from the other? Yeah, I mean, we label them edge slash outside linebackers. Um, I would say that, that, that they're a really key component to what we do. Um, you know, we are a we are a create negative play defense. We're an attacking style defense. And those guys coming off the edge um, need to play with that attacking style mentality. Right. They need to they need to you know create havoc in the run game. Uh, they need to be physical at the point of attack. Uh, but yet we need to be able to rush the passer and make the quarterback uncomfortable in the pocket and affect the quarterback on the other team. So I think it starts with those two guys coming off the edge. Uh, and the versatility that they present. Um, it's not an easy position to recruit to, um, but, you know, I think, we, I think we have an opportunity here early on with a couple of people in place at that spot, um, but it's going to be a position that we're definitely going to have to focus on recruiting moving forward. Anwar, go ahead. I'm sorry, I wasn't, I was unmuted. Hey coach, um, you know, I'm just kind of curious from a uh, receiver standpoint. You know, I know you talked about Jordan Winnington uh, before, but I know you're, you're without Jake and Troy's limited. So what are you seeing from the, the other guys in the room? Is Joshua Moore, anybody else kind of stood out to you? Yeah, I think Josh Moore, Marcus Washington, um, Galvante. I mean, all three of those guys, I think we're starting to see them show up more. Clearly they all have very good speed. Uh, they can create explosive plays. Uh, now it's about playing with a real level of consistency and understanding what we're doing offensively. I think, you know, we get in trouble at receiver right now. We're starting to think a little bit too much uh, because we're, we're uncertain of what to do. And like I just got done talking to players, if, if you don't know what to do in our offense, it's hard to play. 
Um, and so there's not just the physical uh, abilities of the receivers. It's also the, the, the mental capacity to understand our offense to play at a high level. And I think that's an area for all three of those guys that we need to continue to see growth in. Joe Cook, you're up. Steve, we talked to Cade the other day, and he spoke about how he, you know, committed to your the, your predecessor, Tope, Denzel, the guy, two coaches before you, and they decided to come back even before you were announced. So what has it been like with those three specifically, the guys taking the extra COVID year, uh, working with them and trying to make sure that you get together with them and make sure their best season and their last season goes as well as it can? Well, I think with anything, you know, with maturity – comes the experience, right? Comes the physical maturity. Um, I would say just two guys right off the top. I think Cade and, and Denzel have performed very well here um, really through the first half of spring practice. Uh, I think we've seen them improve. I think Denzel's probably playing as good, if not better than, than anybody up front right now for us. I think Cade's got a great grasp of what we're trying to do and, and we see his versatility. Uh, and I think Tope here is going to find his way through it all as well. But with that experience, it, it's like it's like Ray Thornton on defense, right? These guys have played a lot of football. They've seen a lot of football. They're quick studies and quick learners because they've been through a lot. Um, and then you see their maturity. You know, they have they, they have the uh, ability to persevere when practice gets hard and still play at a high level. Uh, and they're great examples for a lot of our younger players to look to of how they approach each day how they approach each period of practice uh, and, and how they have the mental focus and the mental toughness to, to perform at a high level, even when they're fatigued. Uh, Chuck, go ahead. Yeah, Steve, I was just curious um, in terms of you, you were talking about, you know, quarterbacks as managers, but you as a coach managing that position, has that changed from the time you were assistant at USC or first time, head coach at Washington to now simply because options are a lot more for these guys, you know, and you could only get one guy on the field. Have things changed at all in terms of, you know, how you handle, how you manage that position? No, I mean, I, I think the biggest thing is we try to give our guys whatever, wherever they're at on the depth chart, um, you know, our goal is to put them in the best position to have success, uh, to develop them not only physically, but mentally and emotionally, um, so that they feel like they're getting better, that there's growth. Um, and granted at that position, the game's forever evolving. Uh, there, there's different, there's different styles and schemes that, that have evolved. And then ultimately, um, you know, we've got to put our players in the best position to be successful. Sometimes a play looks really good on the board and, but we don't have the right personnel or the right style of player to execute that call. And that's, that's our call to do that. So I, I don't, I don't feel as much different in my approach. My approach is always to try to put our guys in the best position to be successful. The style of the game has, has shifted some. Um, and so the style of player maybe has shifted some, but uh, the end result is, you know, we're, we're trying to find guys that make really good decisions with the ball, take care of the football, uh, can move the team, um, can take advantage of the opportunities when they're there uh, and, and come to practice every day with, with a really good mindset to, to, uh, to be the, one of the leaders on our football team. And I think, like I said, I've been saying this more than once, I think we've got a couple of guys right now that are taking advantage of that. Got time for the three last ones in queue. Go ahead, Terry. Coach, good morning. Thanks for being here. Um, so as you're crafting this team and you're, you're asking everybody to bring the best of the best from the coaches, the athletes, the staff, and even yourself, and you take a step back on a day-to-day -day basis, what are you most excited about from what you've crafted so far? Um, you know, I, I think I'm probably excited over the fact that I think we've made a lot of strides. Um, you know, we, we've been, we've been here for a little over three months now. Um, you know, we've got teams implemented. We've got a strength conditioning program implemented. Um, I think we're seeing growth and development in our, in our individual players, but, but also as a team. It, but the flip side of that is I also know how far we have to go. Um, but if we can keep on that trajectory of growth, that's, that's exciting to me that, that we're on the right trajectory. We're on the right path. And, but you know, that, that remains the challenge. How do we stay on that path? But that's, what's exciting to me is we still have a lot of room to go 
But if we stay on that trajectory, man, we, we got a chance to be a pretty good team. Carter Yates, go ahead. Hey, Coach, with Overshawn out this spring for injury and Mitchell in the transfer portal, how have Jalen Ford, David Benda, some of those younger linebackers stepped up in spring? Uh, David Benda has been terrific. I've uh, been very, very impressed with him. Uh, he is flying around the football field. He's playing physical. Um, he's got a real leader's mentality. Um, so all of those things ha have jumped out to me. Jalen Ford has really flashed at times. Uh, I think one of the one of the big keys that we're, we're trying to impress upon him is the consistency, right? We, we know what that top level performance looks like from him. Now, how do we get him to stay at that level consistently uh, down after down, day after day? And for a young player, he's shown a lot, you know, um, and, you know, I think he's got a great upside in front of him if, if we can keep, again, he's one of those guys on that trajectory. If we can keep him on that trajectory, he's got a chance to be a special player. Jim, let's give it another try. Okay, can you hear me this time, Coach? Got you good, thank you. Okay, great. Um, look, a little bit bigger picture, the NCAA seems very likely to implement the permanent rule, allowing one-time immediate eligibility for transfers. Um, is that a good or bad thing? And, and how are you preparing your staff to handle that, whether players may be wanting to, to, to come or leave? Um, I, I really don't know if it's good or bad. I, I've talked about this uh, at length in that, you know, I think one thing that, that I've always valued um, that we have an opportunity to do here in the college level is, is to really teach this idea of perseverance um, and to, to, to fight through and to earn what you get and to overcome some of the adversity. And I feel like at times the transfer portal um, doesn't allow us to teach that trait uh, because it is so easy to, to transfer. But with that being said, it does provide a lot of opportunities for the young men and for universities. Uh, I really equate it to free agency in college football to where um, if you've got a need on your roster uh, that, that you can go find it in the portal and fill that need, whether it's for a depth standpoint or a frontline player. Um, I, I really believe for us, if, if we do, you know, go into the portal to find a player. It's, it's really to try to fill a need on our roster. But with all that being said, we have to assess those things as they come when our own players decide to go into the portal uh, because that could create a need for us at another position. So I think it's an ongoing process, um, but um, it's just another avenue of another area to where you know our scouting department's really gotta be on point to uh, assess our own roster um, but also be, be prepared to see what else is out there in the portal so that we don't have any holes and we don't have any areas where we're deficient. Last one, Jeff, how are you up? Hey, Sark, kind of in that same realm, uh, assuming the dead period gets lifted and, you know, June 1st, things can start getting back to normal. What has that looked like for you guys in terms of getting ready for the potential for that to happen? And have you gotten any indication uh, as far as when you guys as a staff might be able to, to get back out on the road and, and do off-campus recruiting? I have no idea when we might be able to get back on the road. I, I really have no idea. Uh, if they open up June, I'll be working every day of the month of June. That's just the way it goes. You know, recruiting's our lifeline. So uh, we got to give it uh, the credit it deserves. You know, we'll, we'll be working every day in June.